magic friends, it's me and your professor! Today we talk about a very important topic in magic. As always, when a new episode of The Professor Talks goes online. And it's about a very special gesture today, without which there would be no magic at all for the audience. Namely, the magic gesture. In most cases, the magician have to cover the object with which something is to happen. But this means that the spectator doesn't actually notice when the object disappears. Because for the spectator, it is still there. That's why we have to capture the moment. And we do that with the magic gesture. No matter whether you do it yourself or let the spectator do it. It could be anything. Here are the most common gestures I can think of. Blowing Snapping your fingers Flipping your wrist Waving your hand or a magic wand. A casting spell. And now I open a creative thinking round. Feel free to add your thoughts in the comments. Well, I believe that magic gestures are only really necessary when we cover the object. So it's not really necessary with a floating ball, because that's a visual effect. That means you can see how the effect happens. But when I think about it, actually with a floating ball we are permanently adding a magical gesture, don't we? Or I have another example, with my Benson's coin stack. I often don't use a cover or magic gesture to make it disappear. This can be very interesting and also a very strong effect, as you can see here. But then it has to be performed and played out accordingly. For big illusions, we like to use the whole body as a magic gesture. Of course! So everyone in the last row can really see it. And here too, the magic gesture is a very important part of the trick technique. I don't want to say that it wouldn't work without it, but with a magical gesture, the moment is captured and the effect becomes stronger. Then there are also so-called accessories. We have already talked about them in one of the last episodes. These motivate certain actions. So if I rub the coin with a liquid, then of course something has to happen to it. No magical gesture is needed here. In principle, the accessory becomes a magical gesture. Oh, and I have often noticed that colleagues even use two or three gestures. I would personally advise against that. One is enough. So, don't let the audience blow and then snap your fingers. That makes no sense. Maybe you have seen this before. Less is always more. It would be better if you would put more focus on the single gesture that makes it stronger. Oh, and always give the gesture importance. Put a lot of energy into the gesture. Don't do it just like that. But feel the magic. Then the audience can feel it too. So. That's all I've come up with on the subject of magic gestures. As I said, feel free to write in the comments how you see the whole thing or if you have thought of any other gestures. In any case, 
I think it's a very interesting topic, and I'll say goodbye for today with the words of Luki Pella, the man to pandas, splish splash, 13 cent, eyes closed, boom! See you to the next episode of The Professor Talks.